ball, two strikes. Smith out of the stretch. Big crowd wanting to celebrate. And here it comes. Struck him out, swinging, and the dogs have done it. Mississippi State has won the Southeastern Conference regular season championship here in 2016. Now the pitch, breaking ball, little fly ball is going to drop, and this ball game is going to be tied. But it was just a little fly ball in the right spot. Nothing hit hard. But Arizona has come all the way back to even up the ball game in the bottom of the night. Now the bases are full with two outs. Now the 1-1 pitch. Ground ball headed for right field, and that is a base hit. And the Bulldogs have dropped a six to five decision and extra runnings that will keep them at home and send Arizona to Omaha. Super regionals haven't really left me and I know it hasn't really left the guys that are back. It's a tough, it's a tough thing to swallow, um, you know, having to accept the fact that your season's over and you came up just short of your goal. And it was a phenomenal year with a really good group of guys who I made relationships with that'll last a lifetime, made great memories, and uh, you know, had a really, really good season. So proud of that, um, even to this day, even though you know it didn't quite end like we wanted it to. I am very honored, very honored, and very privileged to be able to introduce to all of you our 17th athletic director for Mississippi State University, John Cohen. Whenever I found out Coach Cohen was the athletic director, you know, I, I was sad. Um, I really enjoyed playing for him, and we had a fun year to, uh, last year. Uh, winning so many games and winning the SEC championship. But what he did say is you're not going to get a coach uh, like him. You're going to get a better coach. What's priority number one? Priority number one is we got to go get this baseball coach. Okay, guys, we're going we're to introduce you to your new head coach. He has tremendous experience, especially when you consider what he's done at a very young age in terms of the coaching profession. So, guys, I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, he's going to share some things with you, and I want to tell you, I'm very, very comfortable in turning this program over to Andy Canizero. He's the one who's going to lead you to a national championship, and I'm going to be standing there watching it happen. Let's give Andy a big hand. First team meeting, you know, he comes, he comes walking in all bowed up, you know, freaking jacked and uh, you know he was just you can tell the excitement was on his face and uh, you can kind of see the whole locker room just get excited about this year. We're gonna play fast, <coughs> if you can run, we're gonna steal bases. If you got power, we're gonna drop the baseball, okay? On the mound, if you throw it hard, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna throw it hard. Energy, fellas. I'm gonna be a high energy guy. You give me everything you got every single day and I promise you when those lights come on in February, We'll be ready to roll. Here we go. Last this morning, we got two young men of the MSU baseball team to conduct cohesion and speed of corners in the team. Let's go. Get, go. get off the field. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. On the truck. Let's go. Why am I beating you? Our guys had never done anything like that before. Um, I talked to Coach Neal about it one day in the weight room and he loved the idea and he immediately got on it and got in touch with the ROTC program here at Mississippi State. And you know, we had tanks that showed up the next day. There was an obstacle course all around campus. I thought it was a really good team bonding and team building thing that we did. I think our players were really surprised with it. Um, I just thought it was a really cool way to kind of end the fall and to kind of let those guys, you know, know that, that we're going to be, you know, ready, ready for business here and we want to do really big things. And the only way to accomplish that is through hard work and through being a great team, and I thought that was a great team bonding thing. Fun experience, looking back at it, it wasn't fun at the time, 
Um, you know, it wasn't the most enjoyable thing you could have done at 5.30 in the morning pushing a big truck around campus, but I think it helped us grow as a team and looking back on it, uh, you know, it's a, memory, it's a good memory that I've made and I think we're, uh, you know, we'll benefit from it. What you did today, okay, you have to do that as a team, okay? This was hard, man. That was really hard, okay? All the things that we want to accomplish this spring are going to be really hard, okay? We have to stay together. We have to do it together, okay? This is the biggest, baddest, hardest league in America, okay? What you did today shows me that we can take care of our business come this spring. If we stay together, we work hard, and we do it as a team, okay? Awesome job today. You guys break it down. Outstanding work. It's time to focus and do the things why you guys chose to come to Mississippi State. Show up with a focus day in, day out, to be ready to perform at the highest level you can possibly be at February 17th. It's not that far away. What is it, 40 days? 40 days, man. 40 days, and this place is going to be packed with people dying to see this group of players go out there and get after it. This is a very different Mississippi State baseball team here in 2017. And not only is it different from a player standpoint, but as we mentioned, John Cohen stepped down as head coach, became the athletic director at Mississippi State, and hired Andy Canazero to be the head coach. What this is right now, you won't see a better environment than this until you guys play in the big leagues. We've got 10,000 people here from BP. They are here pulling for you. This place was electric. Duty Noble was slammed packed. The left field lounge was rocking. I think there were 13,000 people here opening day. It was everything that I was hoping it would be. It was everything that I thought it was going to be. Everybody around the country talks about the great fan base here at Mississippi State. And all I needed to do was walk out on the field that very first day to see that this place is special. This is the greatest place in the country to play college baseball. Having 10,000 fans at a baseball game makes us a better team. It puts more pressure on the opposing team and it keeps us locked in the whole game, because if you don't, you know your fans are going to let you know real quick. Tonight's just game one of a really, really long season, okay? You guys are ready to do this. We're ready to play. We're better than these guys, okay? Yeah. It's a matter of coming out, just staying tunnel vision. There's not a whole lot of people outside of this stadium right now that are, that are going to think we can do what we're about to go show everybody we can do. Tonight's a good opportunity to make a really big statement on the national scene. Yeah, we were good last year, we're back. And we're just as good, and we'll win just as much, and we'll win even more, all right? When they say play ball, we take the field, and they come out there, we punch them right in the face. Get yourself out of here. First pitch of the season, it's a good fastball. And a swing and a miss, uh, that's strike one. Having a team like Texas Tech, a good quality opponent come in the first weekend, and kind of showing ourselves and proving to ourselves that we could compete with them was huge. With the plate, a switch hitter batting from the right side. Pitch is lined, if it's fair, it is trouble, it is fair, it is trouble. In the corner, and around third base in a hurry. Headed towards the plate is Mangum. He will score without a play on a double, and the Bulldogs tie it at one. Luke Alexander drives in the first Bulldog run 
of 2017. Stretch by Jacob Barton in the pitch. Lined uh, towards right field. That's a base hit. It's going to get in the gap. Go all the way to the wall. And that's going to score two more for Texas Tech. We have a very young, inexperienced type of team. I thought we played well enough Friday uh, to win the ball game, but it, we didn't do enough of the little things right in order to win the game. Here's the pitch. And he struck him out on the breaking ball, and that will do it here at Duty Noble as the Bulldogs will be defeated by Texas Tech 5-2 in the opening ball game of the 2017 season. You know, I'm 0-2 I'm opening night. Uh, it's, it's not fun to lose ever. You know, and, and baseball's a tough sport, especially when you have a bunch of young guys, you know, that haven't really played. It's their first time to play together. You know, it, it, opening night's a tough game to win. Yesterday's over. We were better at 8.30 last night than we were at 4.30 at tip-off yesterday. We keep getting better and better and better. Get yourself ready to play. Let's come out and have a great time. Get out there. Here's a pitch and a bouncing ball to the right side. Charge by Stovall. He's got it. He throws in time. One down as we start this ball game as Plumley gets the ground out to get it started. I thought by the second game, I thought the game had kind of slowed down for everybody a little bit and they kind of got back into what they do well. Um, so that I thought the speed of the game slowed down for everybody from day one to day two. And, and I think it's getting that way the more and more we play. Here's the pitch. And a ground ball headed towards left field. That's a base hit. And Mangum is going to come around and head for the plate. He'll score easily without a play. Getting the first one um, out of the way is always huge every season because, you know, get the first one out of the way, the pressure comes off a little bit and you just get to relax and play. So I think that was big. Uh, we ended up going 3-1 and one that weekend, so I think just getting the first one out of the way and allowing ourselves to just kind of step back and play is what really led to, you know, getting two more wins and being able to beat a really good Texas Tech team on uh, Sunday. And there's a high pop-up, and that should do it. Out behind the mound, who's going to call for it? And the shortstop Gridley calls. He makes the catch. Bulldogs have Andy Canazero, his first Bulldog victory. They win it 8-2 here today. It really wasn't until the game was over, you know, that I kind of thought about it as we shook, shook hands with the Western Illinois coaches like, wow, okay, I just won my first college game as a head baseball coach. So it was a tremendous honor. It was something that I was really excited to do. And, um, you know, I just look forward to, to many more victories to come here at Mississippi State. Hi, Dak Prescott here. After losing my mom to colon cancer in 2013, it became personal to me. It is the second leading cancer killer. The good thing though, it can be prevented, it can be treated, and it can be beaten. So if you're 50 or older, get screened. Do it for me and do it for yourself. Come see us at Gastroenterology Associates or Baptist Cancer Center. Locations in Columbus and Starkville. Trip to Oregon, you know, it got us better. It, it definitely did, just because you know, playing in that in that weather, you know, it, it was tough. You know, playing 30 degrees, sleeting. It was a really good trip for us. Um, I thought it was good to get our young team out on the road, get into a hotel, um, you know, get in some adverse conditions. It, it was the toughest conditions I've ever played in. I, I can truly say that. But, um, you know, it, it made us better. We got out there and we didn't do as well as we expected to, but uh, we grinded, we fought hard, and uh, played some really good baseball games. Got a win on Saturday, then Friday, Sunday, we lose one run ball games. You know, easily could have gone up there and swept, and it, you know, when we're getting better, and we're going to figure out how to win those ball games. Uh, you know, we only pulled out one win, but we competed hard all three games, uh, which was big for a young team like ours going on the road for the first time. I think that weekend is going to be something that we can look back on one day and say, hey, that weekend going out there prepared us for the rest of the season, prepared us for some of the hard, tough SEC battles we're going to get into.
Hunter Pilkington is the epitome of a Friday night guy in this league. It's unbelievable to watch a young guy, same age as me, to uh, go out there and you know, pitch as well as he does over and over and over again and just keep grinding on the mound. It's amazing to see. His demeanor on the mound is just unreal. He's got, he's got great stuff and he, he's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun to play behind. He's a special player to this program, and, and so is Play Peyton Plumley, whose first year here has just done an outstanding job as a starter. He gives us a chance to win the ball game every time he steps on the mound, and that says a lot about his makeup and how, and how good of a pitcher he is. Plumley's done a really good job kind of filling in that Saturday role where he's kind of settled in. He really does his thing. You know, the third starter is kind of it's kind of changed a little bit. We're kind of looking for that guy to step up and take the Sunday job right now. But you know, we've got some good candidates, and I think guys are really working hard to get it. Here comes the pitch, ground ball back to the mound. He knocks it down. He picks it up, and a throw to first in time. Another one, two, three inning by Riley Self, who out of the bullpen has had three solid innings. He's retired nine in a row since coming into the ball game. I thought. You know, I would like to be a starter, but once we got here and we we could see, you know, who could develop into a starter, um, I fit more of the uh, the closure role. So um, just wherever they wanted to put me in, starter relief, mid relief, you know, it's it didn't matter to me as long as I could help the team. Riley Self has been sensational for a freshman. Um, he's calm. He has composure. He has confidence. He attacks the strike zone. It's really good. It's really comforting as a head coach to have those guys at the back end of the ball game. You have tremendous confidence in both of those guys closing the game. Um, but all of a sudden now, if you can have Riley Self in some type of setup role, Spencer Price as your closer, that's a really good way to shorten the ball game. It almost becomes a race to six or seven innings knowing that you have those two guys at the back end of the bullpen. We just want to continue to get better every single day we play the game and we, and we feel like we're getting on a roll right now. We feel like we're, able, we're winning some ball games right now. We're still not playing our very best baseball um, and so I just think there's plenty of more room for us to continue to get better and better. I have a great feeling about this team. It's, it's a special group of guys. It's a lot of fun to play with and uh, I can't wait to see where it goes.